Hey guys, thanks for checking out the podcast. Before we get started, I want to remind you about the very cool bucket list trip I am doing in 2026, the Smitty Learns Irish podcast, where I'm going to do my bucket list, hike Ireland for a year, learn about Irish history, town by town, through the mouths of the pub owners and regulars. Because what's a better way to learn about something you love than to experience it yourself? Patreon.com forward slash we the number three Smiths, only three bucks a month, and thanks for checking it out. And welcome to the Rock Radar. My name is Smitty from the What the Hell Everything podcast, another Rock Radar reaction. And this time, uh, not only is it another Night night Wish reaction, uh, it's a twofer. Because I wanted to see, uh, not compare, because I think that's an unfair thing to do with a current member and a former member. But I want to hear how they sound at different eras. I mean, that's kind of like an intriguing thing with bands a lot of times, you know? How does Sammy Hagar sound compared to how does uh, David Lee Roth sound? Things like that. And the cool thing is, and today is going to be A, it's the live Walkin' 2013 version of Ghost River with uh, Flora Janssen. Uh, then, after that, I'm going to do the Phantom of the Opera studio version from 2002, I want to say, with Tarja. I'm not sure how to sit, pronounce her last name or even her first name, so I apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, but uh, because here's the thing. I only did live Nightwish before, and I create a playlist. If you're interested in that kind of thing, let me know, and I'll make that uh, uh, my Rock Radar songs uh, public. But I put them all on a playlist, and I do the studio versions, which is how I want to hear the music. I want to hear how they were intended. And I got to tell you, the studio version of Ghost Love Score, uh, to me, was just not better, but just the way that I want to hear it. You know, when I say all the time why I, why I react to, prefer to react to studio stuff rather than live stuff, yeah, it's awesome live, and she fucking killed it, and there was the floorgasm and everything. Uh, but when you are... Uh, uh, when you, when I when you just want to listen to music, for me, I love to hear how the album uh, was intended. You know, like studio albums are an art form, and the way that bands make albums, I mean, that's what I want to hear. What I want to hear when I listen to music. So, uh, I'm going to listen to the studio version of Phantom of the Opera, and then, quite frankly, any like big rabbit hole that I go down with Nightwish on the Patreon page is all pretty much. I mean, I'm sure I'll do live stuff because they've kind of earned that too. But I'm going to do a lot of studio stuff and allow me to go really down rabbit holes, uh, stuff that you guys necessarily don't see reacted to, but you would like to. The audio really allows you to do that, and quite frankly, uh, videos get blocked way more. So uh, let's give this a shot. Again, a video of Ghost River, and I feel like I've been rambling and rambling, so I apologize. Uh, but before we get to it, hey, sponsor time. Before I get to the reaction, a real quick, huge shout out to my sponsor, M22 in Sutton's Bay. If you've never been to the beautiful region of Traverse City, northern Michigan, uh, there's so much to enjoy and a great place to stay. Uh, make your reservations. A cute little bungalow things. Uh, I always said to myself, how do I describe this uh, M22 in Sutton's Bay? Is it a hotel or is it a motel? Uh, it's an inn, dummy, M22 in Sutton's Bay with a great view of West Bay, West Grand Traverse Bay, essentially Lake Michigan Shores, along the historically gorgeous M22 Drive. So if you're looking to book some vacation time in one of the fastest growing tourist spots in the country, here you go, M22 in Sutton's Bay. Thanks so much. All right, now I promise, a live version of Ghost River. Then we'll check out the studio version with the former singer, Tarja.
rewind that because that was pretty fucking badass. I want to hear that again. Uh, I'm really happy that that happened, by the way. Uh, before that happened, I was going to say um, that I think one of the reasons that I preferred the studio version of like Ghost Love Score, I think the guitar took over on a lot of parts that either A, on the studio version, I don't know the details on this, but uh, uh, the guitar took over for a lot of the inst the. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of symphony and or orchestra instruments in that album, and, but it could have all been keys on that too. I'm not sure. But I think there was way more guitar than there was the uh, the inst the symphonic version, studio version, if that makes any sense at all. And I loved the uh, classical interpretation of the song on the studio version way more. That being said, with this... Uh, I'm really happy that they got into some down and dirty fucking metal. They were grooving at the beginning of the song. I was like really digging the groove, and I haven't heard this guy sing yet, and I fucking like it. Nightmare on Elm Street right there. <laughs> Three, four, better luck. You know, go.
hell yeah. Uh, that was, honestly, I had a fun time listening to that. Uh, I think, maybe, probably, the most fun time I've had listening to a Nightwish song. Aside from the last one with the floorgasm, I mean, but that was just a different sort of thing. But as far as an overall song goes... Uh, it's just grooving, some really cool fucking metal in there. There were a couple times in that song that, for whatever reason, this just the musical part, parts weren't getting me. I, uh, oh, by and large, loved the choices, loved the grooves, loved the chugginess when it came in. His fucking vocals were so sinister, and they worked really well together. Uh, so overall, really, really, really liked that song, and I'm going to listen to it again. Uh, because, I say... Happened with the last couple of Nightwish songs, where I might not gravitate towards a lot of things right at first, but on like second or third listens, uh, it doesn't always happen, but on second or third listens, I, uh, I'm like, oh, I like this part a lot better now, or, you know, it just sits better. So let's listen to The Phantom of the Opera now. This is the studio version with uh, Tarja, I do believe the 2002 album, uh, you know, but I don't remember, Century Child. I do believe is the name of that. So uh, I, f first of all, have never, I've probably heard clips of this song before, The Phantom of the Opera. I know it's a thing. I'm sure my, I think my sister was into it, and it was around my family, but I was just always like, I don't really care about this at all. Uh, nothing against The Phantom of the Opera, but I just never listened to it. So I probably recognize the song a little bit, uh, but I have certainly have never heard Nightwish's interpretation. So let's do that now, shall we? And I think Tarja, the vocalist on this, I've heard that opening, is a much more operatic uh, singer or style, or I could have them confused actually, I'm not sure. But from what I heard of, I don't even know if that was her because there was a singer in between Tarja, and I apologize, uh, there was a singer in between Tarja and Floor, uh, I think Annette, if uh, my memory is serving me correctly. Uh, so I could have been listening to her version of Ghost Love Score. I don't know what I was listening to, but the studio version, definitely. Uh, I love just what you can do in the studio as far as it's like metal and, 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 inst and what's the word I'm looking for? <gasps> Music, Smitty, shut the fuck up. Man, why does metal lend itself so well to, like, classical music? It just does. Like, if you have the right band, then they can deliver, uh, 
whatever it is classical music does. Like I am not a an educated, I'm not a composer, but there's just something about more than any other musical form. Uh, metal just lends itself so well to a cla- like classical stylings, uh, and it's. I picked this song. I didn't want to pick a studio version of a song with Tarja or the other singer Annette, but I didn't really know what I was, what, what I should listen to or anything like that. And I just thought it would be a fun way to introduce me to studio versions of the uh, other singer because I know that this was a big thing. So shut up, Smitty. Here we go. They really went for it at the end there. That was, uh, I honestly, with this particular band, it's nothing against their live performance or the Walken Festival or something like that. But, like, so far, the studio versions of the songs that I have heard from Nightwish, I like way more than the studio version or the live versions, excuse me. And the fucking live versions are badass. But there's just something about uh, the way it sounds on a studio version that I really uh, gravitate towards with this particular music. I will probably still do live stuff from those guys uh, uh, on occasion, but there you go, man. I They sound very similar as far as vocal performance. Uh, they There are little differences that I'm sure more seasoned listeners of the band can spot, oh, this is this singer and this is another singer. Um, but I really thoroughly enjoyed it, and... Uh, always looking for more, especially if you know a band or an artist that is your favorite band that nobody knows about. That's what I'm looking for. My new favorite, my next favorite rock and metal bands. Put the uh, suggestions in the links and uh, please like and subscribe. And if you like my thoughts on this, you want to hear my thoughts on other things or check them out on Patreon. I got the What the Hell Everything podcast. I have the Rock and Roll Roundtable podcast. Way more stuff, including uh, my brand new Black Sabbath documentary that I did called uh, Smith's Favorite Things documentary and retrospective about. Black Sabbath's 1971 album, Master of Reality. It's only three bucks a month at the Patreon page. So uh, you want to go there? You want to check it out? I appreciate it. Uh, Either way, I appreciate you being here right now. What the hell? Everything!